Before we get to today's presentation, I have to take a moment for some shameless self-promotion. A while ago, we did an appearance at a gun show. It went over pretty well, and management has asked us to come back. So on Saturday and Sunday, June 8th and 9th, 2019, the crew and I will be doing an appearance at the gun show at the Polk County Fairgrounds in Rick Real, Oregon. We'll have some guns on display, we'll be talking about some training we have coming up, and we'll have some t-shirts. It should be fun. We'd love to see you come out and say hello. Now, that having been said, let's get to today's presentation. Out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Quite a while ago, people had a lot of questions about the Mossberg Shockwave shotgun, and I never did a presentation on it because so many other people were I didn't want to get into that fray. However, there's a couple of aspects of this gun that I think were inadequately covered. In fact, if anybody covered them, I didn't see it. So today I want to do a little work with this shotgun. Also, recently somebody who calls himself Maitre Mark, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that, contacted me and he told me that. He's in a feud, and he expects his adversary to attack him with a sawn-off shotgun loaded with birdshot. And he had some questions such as, how big would you expect the pattern to be at distances like 20 meters with a sawed-off shotgun loaded with birdshot? Also, although we have seen that at very close distances, birdshot can do a lot of damage, how much damage is he going to incur if he gets shot at 20 meters with a sawed-off shotgun loaded with birdshot? And Maitre Mark is armed with a sword and a shield, and his shield, so he reports, is made of one and a half inch thick MDF, medium density fiberboard, particle board. And he wanted to know how much protection will that give him from birdshot loaded into a sawed off shotgun at distances of 5, 10, and 20 meters. So today we're going to try to answer Maitre Mark's questions and do a little work with the Mossberg Shockwave shotgun. Now, this comes with a couple of disclaimers, one being when you buy the Mossberg Shockwave at the store, this is the way it comes. I did not modify this. Also, although it is prohibited in some jurisdictions in the United States, the Shockwave is perfectly legal in the state that I live in. And with that having been said, let's get started. And the first thing I want to talk about is power. We know that in conventional rifles and pistols, longer barrels will give you more complete propellant combustion and thus more power. So the longer the barrel, the more velocity, up to a point. But when you compare shotguns like this Mossberg 512 gauge with a 20 and a half inch improved cylinder bore barrel to the Mossberg Shockwave 12 gauge shotgun with a 14 and a half inch cylinder bore barrel, how much power are we losing when we lose six inches of barrel? Let's go to the chronograph and see what we can learn about that. I've got my chronograph set up at four yards. Normally I set it up at seven, but for shotguns with multiple projectile rounds, I'm going to set it up at four yards, and I'm going to start with the Mossberg 500, which I have loaded with Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number six lead bird shot. 1270. 1296. 1284. 1280. And 1283. Now let's see how the shockwave compares. And now the same ammunition in the shockwave. 1196. 1222. 1219. 1231. And 1231. Now let's try a different type of ammo. Now let's try Remington 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, double lot buck, nine pellet. 1360. 1312. 1302. 1285. 1298. And 1234. Now let's see how this ammunition performs out of the shockwave. And now the shockwave. 1136. 1118. 1112. 
1099 and 1100. Now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, I crunched the numbers. Now, in shooting the bird shot through the Mossberg shockwave, the last two shots I fired had identical velocities. That's indicative that one of those was a malfunction. So off camera, I fired one more shot, got a velocity of 1165, and that's what I used to compute the mean. So with the bird shot out of the Model 500, I got a mean velocity of 1282. Out of the shockwave, it was 1206, a loss of 76 feet per second. That's significant. But with the buckshot, out of the Mossberg 500, it got a velocity of 1298, and out of the shockwave, 1113. That's a loss of 185 feet per second. That's a lot. So we can see that when you go to the shorter barrel of the shockwave, it is going to cost you significant amounts of performance. Just how much will depend on what kind of ammo you're using. Now let's talk about the patterning of this gun. I'll shoot from 20 meters, that's 21 yards, 2 feet, and I'll shoot the target on your left with the shockwave and the target on your right with the Mossberg 500, both of which will be loaded with Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, double lot buck, 9 pellet. And let's see how the patterns compare. We see that the shockwave patterned a little higher and there's two impacts above the shoot and see center, but as far as the size of the pattern, there isn't much difference. In fact, the shockwave held just a slightly tighter pattern than the Model 500 did. So now I'll paste up these shot holes and do this drill again with bird shot and let's compare the results. The shot I used for this was Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and 1 quarter ounce of number 4 lead bird shot. And again, we see that the shockwave patterned a little high, but as far as the density of the pattern, there just isn't much difference. So we see what kind of pattern we're getting with the shockwave at 20 meters. What kind of damage can we do with the shockwave at 20 meters when it's loaded with bird shot? To test that, we're going to use the meat target. Now, for those who haven't seen it, the meat target is leather jacket skin, pork chop pectorals, pork ribs, a bag of oranges to simulate lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, four layers of t-shirt on the front, four layers of t-shirt on the back, and the whole thing followed by the new and improved high-tech police bullet stop. And I've got my Mossberg shockwave loaded with Remington 12 gauge, 2 and 3 quarter inch, 1 and 1 quarter ounce of number 4 lead bird shot, and we'll shoot this from 20 meters. Now, in previous presentations, we've seen that at very short distances, like 5 meters and less, bird shot can do a lot of damage to our meat target. But what kind of damage will it do at 20 meters? Let's find out. A lot of pellets hit our meat target. Many of the pellets were stopped by the pork chop pectorals. Some were stopped by the pork ribs, but a few pellets did get through into the orange lung tissue. But unless a good number of pellets hit you in a maxiofacial area, especially in your eyes, this probably would not be an immediately debilitating wound. However, I think it could be a wound that would prove fatal without timely and very serious medical intervention. So to what degree would Maitre Mark's shield protect him from these birdshot pellets at 20 meters? Let's put that to the test. What I have here is three half-inch thicknesses of MDF. A total of one and a half inches, approximately 37 millimeters, the same thickness as Maitre Mark's shield. And behind it is you. Now, I don't have this secured as just leaning against the table. If you were holding a shield, there'd be some give to it. There's some give with this. And again, I have the Mossberg shockwave loaded with 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and one quarter ounce of number four lead bird shot. So let's shoot this from 20 meters and see how the shield and you fare. Some of our soda jugs got knocked over. That was just a matter of concussion. The shield stopped all the pellets. So we'll set our soda jugs up again and try this from 10 meters. Shield still held just fine. Got the jug set back up. Let's try this again from five meters. Now it looked like our pellets went through and blew this jug up really well. There's actually no pellet holes in that. That was just secondary projectiles from 
the MDF blowing off the back of the shield. You see with the other shot, nothing actually went through. So even at five meters, the shield still holds up against the Mossberg shockwave. If you had a shotgun with a longer barrel, perhaps more powerful shotgun ammo, five meters, this might not hold up very well. So it looks like our MDF is pretty good at stopping shot pellets, but just how bullet resistant is it? Well, I've turned it over, so we're shooting at the part that doesn't have gaping holes in it. And I've got my Smith & Wesson model 638 loaded with Remington green and white box, 38 special, 158 grain round nose lead. So I'll shoot it with this from 10 meters, and let's see how we do. So we see that although the 38 made holes in the MDF, it didn't have enough power after doing so to do any damage to our soda jugs. So it would appear that when shooting this with birdshot or relatively low powered handgun ammunition like standard pressure 38 special round nose lead, this MDF does have some bullet resistant properties. But what about buckshot? I've got a new shield set up and now I have the shockwave loaded with the Remington green and yellow box 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch double op buck 9 pellet and let's shoot it with this from 20 meters and see what kind of results we get. And it looks like our results with the buckshot are exactly what we got with the 38 Special. Broke some off the back of our MDF, but none of the pellets penetrated with enough force to do anything to our soda jugs. In fact, one of them I can see is stuck right here in the board. So the takeaways from all of this. Well, specific to the Mossberg Shockwave shotgun, three things. One, we saw that when we went to the shorter barrel, we definitely lost a significant amount of power. Two, as far as the size of the pattern, I saw no significant difference between the Shockwave and the 500 with its 20 and a half inch improved cylinder bore barrel. Three, as far as how impractical I think this gun is and how much I dislike shooting it, that's a topic for another time. Now, specifically, Maitre Mark's questions. What kind of pattern will we get at 20 meters with the short barrel shotgun? We saw that. How well would you fare if you got shot at 20 meters with the short barrel shotgun loaded with birdshot? Unless you got some pellets in your face, especially your eyes, it looks like it wouldn't be immediately debilitating, but most certainly could be fatal. Now the effectiveness of the shield, whether the short barrel shotgun is loaded with birdshot or buckshot, the shield looked like it would be effective unless the range was just point blank. However, in looking at the size of the pattern, the shield only covers so much of you, so you've got to make sure that shield is covering the right part of your body. And adding a good set of safety glasses might be a good idea. So as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Mossberg Shockwave and Answering Maitre Mark's Question video.